Hello, good evening, and welcome to Memorial Field at Spencervale, where tonight on WOSN we'll bring you a Northwest Conference matchup between the visiting Crest Unites and the homestanding Spencerville Bearcats. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Scott Nurse, and we'll bring you all the action tonight here from Spencerville. And Scott, both of these squads have, have been searching for a win for a long time, and I think they have to think that both sides have an opportunity to grab one here tonight. Absolutely. Crestview's getting some people back from injuries, and, and it's homecoming here tonight for Spencerville, so both teams will be pretty fired up. And so we'll now take a look at the keys to the game for tonight's action. Scott, what stands out to you that are, are the three most important things for each side to grab a victory tonight? Well, I've got three keys. Number one, D it up. Both teams are scoring about 20 points a game on offense, but defensively, Spencerville has given up almost 40 points a game and Crestview 19 points a game. The defense has to step up and be a difference maker to get the win tonight. Got to be tough, be physical, and it all starts on the line of scrimmage. Number two, quarterback play. Spencerville's Josh Henline leads the Northwest Conference in passing with almost 1,500 yards, 12 touchdowns, and a 61% completion rate. Crestview has been quarterbacking by committee due to injuries. I think this will be a key area of tonight's game. Keep an eye on the quarterback differential. The quarterbacks have to strike when the opportunity presents itself. No mistakes, no turnovers. And then third, relax and love the game. For several years in a row, the game was decided on the last play of the game. It's a game that often brought a lot of pressure. Tonight, there's not that much pressure. Neither are in the hunt for the Northwest Conference. This is a pride game. It's about a game that both teams circle on their calendar. It's about effort and playing with passion. It's about really taking it all in, relaxing and playing free, especially for the seniors. Love the game and play it with everything you have together. Both coaches told us that this game is a lot about having fun tonight, so we're going to step aside and come back with some first quarter fun when we return here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Kerry Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. Crest, you won the opening coin toss, elected to defer until the second half, so Spencerville will receive the opening kickoff here. Again, I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Scott Nurse. And we'll bring you all the action as the kick continues to bounce and finally does cross the goal line. And luckily for Crestview, that crosses the goal line instead of going out of bounds. So that's a 15-yard swing and field position there. Yeah, absolutely. They'll set up shop. It'll be interesting to see who's going to play quarterback for them tonight. We've heard a couple things about returns from injuries. Yeah, Carson Hunter is their usual starting quarterback. He was warming up. But the Spencerville offense takes the field first as Josh Henline will trigger things for the Bearcats. Henline, a complete 61% of his passes, 12 touchdowns, five interceptions. His touchdowns, passing yards, and completion percentage leads the NWC. He'll turn and fire to Nate Coulter on the near side. He's tugged down by a couple of, I guess, whistled down. Never hit the turf, but a Parker Spieth, the initial night on the stop for Crestview. But it's a gain of a couple. Nate Coulter, the leading wide receiver in the NWC. You need to get a great look at our WOSN cameras. You get this beautiful fall weather. The sun's still up. The colors are gorgeous in the background and on the jerseys. It's a fun night for football, Scott. Yeah, and you mentioned we'll see a lot of that 14 and a half yards per catch for Nate Coulter. Henline will hand off to Carter Lehman. His first carry of the night gets very close to a Union Bank first down. Carter Lehman has 179 yards on the year coming in, averages 3.3 yards per carry, just a tough inside runner. Got a great look at that replay as well as Josh Henline will bring the Bearcats to third and less than a yard. We'll see if they run the football again here. They'll fake the handoff. Henline keeps it himself. He's cut down on the open field by speed, but it's enough for a Union Bank first down. It'll move the chains. Yeah, good decision there. Josh Henline has uh, about 47 yards on the year, so he doesn't run off him, but when he does, it's effective. And he's got a couple of touchdown runs so that you can get those short yarded situations at the goal line. But uh, and that was one of those short yard situations, just wasn't at the goal line, but it did move the chains, and the Bearcats go back with two wide receivers to each side. 
Henline hangs in the pocket, will fire down the middle of the field, looking for Coulter, and it's undercut by Jarrett Harding on the coverage for Crestview. Nice recovery there as he was beat just for a second, but was able to tip that pass away. Yeah, he had good position, inside position. Uh, they are in, Crestview's in cover, cover two, and you can see he's just out there waiting inside position. Goes up and uh, knocks it away with that left arm. So Good second, technique. Second and ten here for the Bearcats as they'll split two wide receivers out wide to each side as Blake Summers and Hayden Heyman come to the bottom of your, bottom right corner of your screen and they'll hand off to Lehman once again. His second carry of the night, but he's spun down in the backfield. Big play made there by Crestview's Leon Putman to make a big tackle for a loss there and a pivotal down. Well, I mentioned at the top, you got to D it up here. It's going to be, uh, I think defense is going to dictate who wins this game. Crestview with a nice defensive effort there, tackling by committee and really rallying to the football. So third and 12 here for the Bearcats in their own territory as Henline has two wide receivers out wide each side again. Dropping back to pass, looking for the screen, and it's poked away from Nate Coulter. He was there for just a moment. Wesson Ludwig tips it away, and that's going to bring up fourth and long. Yeah, I like the route. It was just a little inside drag route. And uh, Henline threw a good pass, put it right where it needed to be. But defensively, Crestview made a better play on yep. that. Crestview head coach James Lotzenizer told us to begin the season that Wesson Ludwig is the heart of the Knights. He is their, their undisputed leader, and he makes a big play there on third down to force a punt here. So not a three and out for the Bearcats. They do pick up one Union Bank first down, but Josh Henline back to punt. He averages 31.7 per punt. That ball bounces at the 42-yard line, so Crestview are going to have relatively pretty good starting field position for their first drive. Yeah, that ball looked like it bounced up and hit Owen Conley. A freshman cover down there on the field for the Bearcats. The ball at the 42-yard line as the Crestview Knights come to the field, and we'll see who their starting quarterback is, whether it's going to be Levi Grace, a junior, or Carson Hunter who is a senior. Hunter started the season as a quarterback and suffered some injuries, and he will be the starting quarterback as Braxton Leith will line up to his left and Isaac Clyde will line up to his right in the shotgun. And they'll hand off to Leith. He'll reverse field. And then it's gobbled up. Blake Summers in on the stop for Spencerville. So a tackle for loss there for the Bearcats. A loss of one there on first down. Good job by the defense there. Uh, we mentioned Carson Hunter. He's 57 for 109 on the year, 759 yards passing with seven touchdowns. So he's very effective yeah, he's, throwing he the football. changes the game for Crestview offensively where, you know, we've got to see him last week where due to no fault of their own, that just the passing game wasn't an option for them. But with Carson Hunter, it certainly does change things. Right. It gives him a little more uh, balance. Leith makes one man miss, gets to the 45, gets to the midfield stride, but he fumbled the football. There's a pile. Ball's Spencerville believes, believes they have it. We await the signal, and they do. Bearcats force a turnover at the Come midfield on, stripe. That's a big play for that Bearcat D. Take a look at the replay. Braxton Leaf coming here to this near sideline. Makes Josh Henline miss and then just had the ball ripped out by Carter Lehman. And the Bearcats spot the football. Yeah, I he believe Lehman was the one who got on it as well. He lowered well. his shoulder. Looked like he wanted to try and run him over and and uh, initially looked like he got the better of him and then uh, just got an arm in there and ripped the ball out. So Spencerville trailed, or was minus eight in the turnover margin. They get one there as Nate Coulter looks to pitch back to Hayden Heyman as Henline going to throw after the reverse. He's got a man on that far sideline, makes a miss. It's Coulter who got the initial handoff. There is a penalty flag back at the original, or five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Might be coming back. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see in the, the, the area that the penalty flag was thrown in. I'm not sure. Don't know if they had. My guess is it's going to be a holding. The official threw it right. I was going to say, I believe it's an in, uh, illegal formation because the official if we on that replay, you could see right at the top of your screen, had tried to get somebody's attention and then threw his penalty flag immediately as the ball was snapped and the Bearcats have that play negated. 
Yeah, I think they had uh, what's considered too many in the backfield. He was off the line of scrimmage instead of should have been up on the line of scrimmage. Well, and you, you create those special formations for those special plays. It's easy, uh, you know, in the heat of the moment, maybe to not get perfectly lined up. So instead of a big play as they approach the mats heating and cooling red zone, instead it's first and 15 for the Bearcats. Two wide receivers, Lehman riding sidecar to headline in the shotgun. He's pressured, stands in the pocket, and now will fire to Summers dragging across the middle of the field. Blake Summers, just his third reception of the season, gets a six-yard gain, and will make it second and ten. And again, I like that play. He, you see Josh kind of steps toward the receiver, makes it a shorter throw, much more higher percentage, less likely of a, of a turnover interception. And Good game. Did a nice job there setting his feet as well. You know, when you get on the move, it's it's tough to think, you know, hey, I've got to reset before I deliver this football. But that's that's good quarterbacking from a, a guy who hasn't played quarterback since his freshman year, didn't play football his sophomore and junior seasons, and came out when they found out they were going to chuck the pigskin around a little bit. And he's done a good job of that. But that one batted down by the Crestview defense is Ren Sheets gets his six foot six oh, hands up practice. and pats that one down. It'll bring up third and long here for the Bearcats. Well, you can see just a good job by the Crestview left side defensive wall getting up and getting their hands up in the air, knocking that pass down. Isaac Klein might have been the first one to get his hands on a football, which uh, <laughs> considering Ren Sheets is six foot six and Isaac Klein is listed at five foot nine, that's a nice defensive break up there by Isaac Klein. So third and nine here for Spencerville with the ball at the Crestview 49 yard line. And line looks to throw another screen. Lobs to Lehman, but it's through the, his outstretched hands, and that'll bring up fourth and long once again. Well, you're kind of at an interesting point on the field right now. I know it's early, but uh, midfield and your punter is your quarterback. Your quarterback is your punter. So that, that, that really kind of gives you some options of things if you decide to go for it. I think it's a little bit too far, fourth and nine. Yeah. But um, we'll keep an eye on that. And, and certainly Josh Henline has a strong enough arm that from the 40-yard line, you know, he can throw a 20-yard pass to, to complete it at the other first down marker. But he does punt it away, and it bounces inside the 20-yard line, takes a great Spencerville bounce inside the 10, rolls back out to the 13. And that is where the ball is going to be spotted. So Crestview, a decided difference in starting field position for their second drive. Yeah, and, it, you know, that's what you want if you're Spencerville. You, you got the turnover midfield. You didn't move the football, but at least now you've pinned Pre Crestview pretty deep in their own territory. So the Knights will have a long way to go at their own 13-yard line. Crestview 3-4 and four on the season. Spencerville 1-6. and six. Knights in the final playoff berth of Division 7, Region 26. Would like to grab a win here tonight to keep those playoff hopes alive and keep those playoff, keep their foot inside the door of the playoffs as the Bearcats trot on a defensive lineman late. As Carson Hunter returns to the field for his second drive, leading the Crestview offense. They'll send Klein in motion, hand off to him to the outside. Isaac Klein's got a little bit of room to run out to the 24-yard line before he's tripped up, but a big run there by the sophomore to pick up the Union Bank first down for the Knights. Yeah, and Isaac Klein is heavily used in this Crestview offense, no question about it. He has 475 yards on the year coming in, six touchdowns, averages 4.5 a carry, so he's a pretty good option. And he was one of those guys that the Knights weren't necessarily sure we're going to be able to go tonight, but he's been a pivotal point of the offense so far here in the early stages of their second drive. Klein takes the hand, oh, doesn't take the hand off. They'll throw to Spieth along the near sideline. Carson Hunter completes his first pass of the evening as Parker Spieth picked up about six yards there on first on first down. Yeah, Parker Spieth, Spieth with five receptions on the year, 69 yards and a touchdown. Good job of looking the football in. So second and four, and this is where Spencerville thought they had to be better on first down than they were last week in a loss to Ada. That's its second and short once again for the Knights. As Braxton Leith gets the handoff on the zone, makes one man miss, reverses field out to the 40-yard line. Gets close to the midfield stripe, but a penalty flag comes in late. I believe we've got a hold 
on a night wide receiver downfield. To Braxton Leith, a 5'10 freshman, a couple of carries here in the early going. Showed the shiftiness there, but it's going to come back. Yeah, when the ball started to, towards the left side, you saw all three linebackers for Spencerville kind of flow that way. And then when he reversed field, quite a bit of opening on that right side. So instead of a first down, it's second and as literally as short as you could possibly be. That down marker is on top of the first down chain on the far side of the field as Hunter will simply hand up. They'll throw the football out to Jarrett Harding. Had to stretch for it, could never corral it, and it will bring up, bring up third and dangerously short. Yeah, I like the play call. Get an athlete out there in space. Spencerville probably wasn't expecting a pass there, thinking they're thinking run. So I like the uh, the play call, just uh, didn't quite execute it. Well, it, it, being second and that short, it gives you the opportunity to take a shot. Here's the nice will line up in the I formation, and they'll hand off to Jared Harding, and he'll power ahead for the Union Bank first down. But on second and short, basically you just t t taught your quarterback, hey, we can take a shot here. You just can't take a sack because we got another down to pick up a quarter of a yard. Right, and you see Jared Harding there. He's got 18 carries, 122 yards on the year. That's his job, is that short yardage, rough running. Hunter back in the pistol with two wide receivers to each side. As they'll freeze for just a moment, get further instructions. The Spencerville defensive line will shift on the interior. They get a false start by the Crestview offensive line. Delayed just a moment there, I think. Lots of folks in the stand saw it, but the officials wanted to make sure they got it right, and they did. Got to move the, the ball back five yards. Crest, you've shown a lot of different looks here, Scott, in the early going. Of, you know, they've ran the I formation. They've thrown some RPO. They ran an RPO at one point on that second and one. Uh, Braxton Leith has shown some shiftiness. They, they, they've been pretty diverse here in the first quarter. Yeah, and I think that's what, uh, that's what having your starting quarterback back yeah. means. So Carson Hunter in the shotgun. Looks to fire to the far side. Nearly caught by Jarrett Harding, but the concentration broken up by Zach Lozier will make it third and long. Yeah, it looked to me like Carter Lehman out there, number 26 maybe, got a hand on that. I think it was 24 if we take a look at this replay from his linebacker spot. Yeah, you're he right. He just tipped it, and Harding thought it was coming to him and kind of broke his concentration there just at the last moment. Yeah, just a great play there. So third and, or excuse me, second and 15. Spencerville's got a lot of freshmen and sophomores out there on they the do. field. Isaac Klein, a sophomore, gets the carry. He's out in the open field. Josh Henline cuts him down at the 41-yard line, but that's a big Isaac carry Klein there on second down to, to make things a little that easier for the Crestview Knights. Henline. Yeah, he picked up about five yards there. It's never a great thing necessarily when your deep safety is making tackles it, true. on a running play, but uh, Josh does a pretty good job of pursuit Henline here. Five. Holds him to only five yards. So third and five for the Knights. Didn't get to first third down on their first drive. Fumbled the ball on the second play as Hunter fakes the handoff. And his pressure has to step up. And now will try to run for the first down. Scampers to that far sideline and does move the Union Bank chains. Yeah, and he's athletic. Got pretty good speed there. It's nice having him back if you're a Crestview fan for sure. They, they've been struggling a little bit with quarterback play. A six foot two, 185 pound senior. Scampers for the first down, sticks the ball out to make sure he gets it. And that moves the chains as they approach the midfield stripe. Hunter, back to pass once again, pressured. Has to roll to that far side once again. Will go deep, and he's got a man. It's caught by Kellen Putman inside the 20-yard line. That puts the Knights inside the Matt's heating and cooling red zone. Well, and again, the last two plays, Car Carson Hunter, has, his escapability has been key to their success. So he was able to run for a first down last play, and this play is almost sacked, and he's able to get out of there and, and, and execute a big play for Crestview. Logan Johnson put the pressure on him, but he's able to scamper away and find Putman downfield. 
Yeah, for Putman, he's got uh, 17 now, 18 catches, 389 yards coming in, and five touchdowns. Ball spotted to the 16-yard line. So they'll hand off to Leith. He reverses field once again, shifts another tackle, gets very close to another Union Bank first down as a penalty flag comes in at the conclusion of the play. But Braxton Leith with a football in his hands a couple of different times. Scott, we've seen that, that athletic ability from the freshman. Well, he's kind of shifty. He doesn't really run full speed ahead. He, he's, he's always sort of cutting and moving, and, and you're not sure where to go to, to tackle him. So we'll see what the penalty is as they move the ninth back after the hold. And again, that, that's the second costly penalty against Crestview, but it'll move things outside the Matt's heating and cooling red zone at the 21-yard line. So the Knights, two wide receivers to each side. Leaf to the right of Hunter in the gun on first and 15. Spencerville looking for a defensive stop. Hunter will turn and fire to Putman on the near sideline. Tries to make one man miss, is spun around. Now has to make a couple of guys miss, and he's brought down by Lozier at the 26-yard line. That's a big defensive play there by Zach Lozier. The 5'10 freshman. And Scott, you mentioned the youth movement on the Crasser on the Spencerville D. They've got what, one, two, three. Four sophomores, three freshmen in the starting lineup. They've got a lot of youthful players on the field, and Lozier, the freshman, makes a big play there. Yeah, no question about it. Carter Lehman had, a, had an opportunity to make that tackle, and he, he got away from him, and it actually worked out in Spencerville's favor as Putman retreated. Hand off to Leith on the draw, able to break a couple of tackles to get back to the 22-yard line, so a gain of about five there for Braxton Leith, and that'll bring up third and uh, 17 for the Knights. Brings up third down and and long. one of the things Crestview told us they wanted to accomplish was they, they, they wanted to score off of sustained drives. The upcoming play is the 11th play of this drive, not counting plays that were negated by penalties. So I'm sure they'd love to pick up a first down here and keep that key to the game as Spencerville calls their first timeout here of this first quarter, 2.55 to play here in their first quarter, still scoreless between Spencerville and Crestview on WOSA. Tonight's first down sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Several Crestview Union Bank first downs on this drive that started at their own 13 yard line, got inside the Mats heating and cooling red zone. They've been pushed back a couple of different times here, Scott. And third and 17 upcoming. I assume that this is four down territory for the Knights. Yeah, I would think so. Um, you know, you want to get on the board early, and at this point, you, you want to score touchdowns. Crestview, they're high offensively for the season. 51. Last week, though, unfortunately for the Knights, set their low at six points, but Carson Hunter has returned at the quarterback spot that certainly changes things for the Knights. So third and 17 with the ball, the 22-yard line. Klein and Leith in the gun with Hunter. They'll send Putman in motion. Fake the handoff to Leith. Hunter to the end zone. Looking for Putman, he goes up and grabs it. What a spectacular catch by Kellen Putman. A 22-yard touchdown from Hunter to Putman. He climbs the ladder and brings it down. Well, this is exactly what Crestview didn't have last weekend when we saw them play. They really didn't have a passing attack at all. And you can see here Carson Hunter, really nice touch. Puts a lot of air under this football, lets it drop right down on his receiver there, number three, Putman. And he, he does a great job of going up high point in the football and making the catch. What a fantastic Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. That could be best of the night from Carey Insurance. That could be a Layfeld Welding Industrial Supply top five play. What a grab by Kellen Putman and a great look at it from our WOSN crew. The extra point is up and good. And the Crest Unites lead the Spencerville Bearcats 7-0 in the first quarter on WOSN. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all your insurance needs as Crestview gets their first Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown of the night on that fantastic pitch and catch from Carson Hunter to Kellen Putman. He climbed the ladder and got both feet inbounds. He got a, and just a spectacular look at it from our 
WOSN cameras, but uh, what a great play there for Crestview to shift momentum. They had gone backwards a couple of times there, Scott, but that's a big touchdown for the Knights. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, when you look at them on the year, they scored 146 points. They've given up 130. So their games have all been pretty close, and that's without a quarterback in, in yeah. several of those games. So they've come back now, and, and you look at Spencerville, on the other hand, they've scored 135 points, but they've given up 279. So that that's the key there is that Spencerville's defense is going to have to rise up and meet this, uh, this rejuvenated Crestview offense. We told you that Crestview wanted to score points off of sustained drives. How about an 11-play? 87-yard touchdown drive capped off on a 22-yard touchdown pass from Carson Hunter to Kellen Putman. They also wanted big plays in the special teams as they'll boot it away and get it to Lehman. Carter Lehman on the return out to the 30-yard line, squirts through a couple of tackles, gets out to the 37. Nice return there by the junior running back. Yeah, Carter Lehman has 233 yards in kickoff return so he does a really nice job he's had 14 of them so he's averaging about 17 yards per return that's what you want so the Bearcats will go back to work offensively Josh Henline completing 61 percent of his passes coming into tonight they've, they've ran the ball maybe a little bit more than I expected them to as Carter Lehman only had 54 carries coming in tonight he's got three or four here in the first quarter well I think that's what you want to do early you want to try to set it up and be balanced as much as possible Endline rolling to his right, stops and fires to Hayden Heyman across the middle of the field. Nearly got the Union Bank first down on Hayden Heyman's sixth catch of the season. Yeah, and again, uh, that's a play they've run several times now where he's, he just, it's just a little drag route right across the middle of the field. He basically mirrors Josh's uh, his parallel lines there, and uh, Josh just waits till he gets open, then hits him. So a nine-yard reception for Heyman will make it. Second and one. Oh, we get a, another penalty here. We're moving the football back. I didn't see a penalty flag, but the officials got the football back at the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, it must have been a hole because they're moving it about 10 yards, but. You know, to come back to that previous play, what I really like about that play though, is you've got the receiver and the quarterback running in the same direction, mm -hmm. so you're, you, you, you minimize that pass. Again, it, you make the pass much, much shorter, much, much greater chance for completion. Three receivers to the right of Henline now as he'll hand off to Carter Lehman on first and 13, gets out to the 40-yard line, so a gain about five or six there for Lehman on first down to make things a little bit more manageable here on second and third down. Take a look at the replay here. Yeah, Carter comes in averaging 7.7 .7 per carry. Averages, uh, though, only about 25, 26 yards a game. So he only carries it about three or four times a game, but does a nice job when he does. So second and eight here for the Bearcats. Coulter, the man in motion. They'll hand off to Lehman. Oh, Henline will keep it himself, actually. He gets to the 45 before he's brought down by Wesson Ludwig and Hayden Parrott. Yeah, good read by Josh Henline there. He's, he's reading the defensive end on Crestview's side, and he sees that the defensive end commits, so he pulls it, gets to the outside there, picks up about four yards. So third and two here for Spencerville with the ball at the 46-yard line, their own 46-yard line. It's a trio of receivers to the bottom of your screen. They'll run the option to the right. Pitch to Lehman out of the open field. He'll get past the midfield stripe, and Moore picks up the Union Bank first down and gets to the 45-yard line. Yeah, I like that play. Uh, I can tell you somebody in the stands who doesn't, though. Coach Sensoval probably hates that play because <laughs> you can see the defensive end attacks Henline, and so Henline does the right thing and, and pitches it to his option man, and they pick up a, a real nice gain there. In addition to being a great football player, Josh Henline, one of the Better basketball players for Spencerville. The Bearcats primed for a, another uh, good basketball season. They've got a lot of uh, talented players back from a team that made the district finals a year ago as Carter Lehman takes the hand off the fourth consecutive run here by the Bearcats. He's got the Union Bank first down and more as he approaches the Mats heating and cooling red zone, shoved out about the 25-yard line. Carter Lehman getting a lot of work here on this drive, Scott. Yeah, he is, no question about it. 
And just good vision here. When he gets through the initial line and gets into that second level, nice job of making a cut, finding the open space, picking up a big game. So the ball right at the 25-yard line of Spencerville. Spencerville's got a good drive going yeah. here, a nice mix of pass and run. And first and 10 here, the 25-yard line. They wanted to capitalize on all their scoring opportunities. It's this one looks like it's about to present itself. You got Coulter out here on the wide side all alone. Lehman, his third consecutive carry. Oh, the ball's carry. loose. He dropped a football, and the official says he's down. The official right at where Nate Coulter hit the deck yeah, immediately looked, pointed to the ground. Yeah, it looked like the ground caused the fumble. Get a great look at it here on our WOSN replay. Yeah, he, he was definitely down, both knees down, the ground uh, had caused that fumble. That would have been a big stop for that Crest UD, though, as Spencer was able to matriculate the ball down the field here on five consecutive runs to begin this drive, and looks like that will do it for the opening stanza. So Spencerville going to have the football at the 20-yard line inside the Matt's heating and cooling red zone when we return for second quarter action. Crest U leads 7-0 here on WOSN. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to Matt's Heating, call Matt's Heating.com to schedule your free estimate. So the Spencerville Bearcats will begin the second quarter inside the Matt's Heating and Cooling Red Zone. And Matt is sitting about uh, 10 feet in front <laughs> of us down in the stands. So we Proud appreciate Proud Bearcat you. supporter. That's right. We appreciate the support for WSN and TV 44. Yeah, wouldn't be able to bring you high school football on Friday nights without it is. You got to have the red zone, right? Got to get to the red zone, and <laughs> Spencerville wanted to get to the red zone and capitalize on their offensive opportunities to put points on the board, and they're inside the Matt's heating and cooling red zone here on second and short with the ball just inside the 20-yard line. Five consecutive runs by the Bearcats to start this drive. Well, and, and you know, the Bearcats lost a really good running back early in the season for the second time, Braden Bowers. So, um, you know, these other guys have stepped up nicely. A big play there made in the open field by Crestview's number 84. That's Leon Putman on the defensive stop as Carter Lehman ran right to him to make it six consecutive runs there. But Putman able to gobble him up there. Yeah, and I like what uh, Spencerville's doing. I think uh, look for a pass here. It's third and about five. A nice controlled pass, short pass, maybe another drag route, something where it's a high, high degree of completion. So Henline will be in the gun. Coulter to the right of your screen, the leading receiver in the NWC. Henline scrambles, makes one man miss, gets to the 15. He's got the Union Bank first down and more. Josh Henline inside the five before he's brought down, but it's going to be first and goal for the Bearcats. Yeah, really good decision there by Josh. As he rolls out to the right, you can see the whole defense is coming with him, and he spots a big hole back to his left and just takes off. And a good decision by the, by the quarterback. Picks up big yardage, puts him at first and goal in the Mats heating and cooling red zone. That's exactly right. It's the Bearcats now seven consecutive runs. We'll see if they make it eight inside the five-yard line. Henline with Lehman. Henline keeps it himself, tries to get to the goal line. I think he's in. And he's in for his fifth touchdown run of the season. Josh Henline puts the Spencerville Bearcats on the board after the four-yard touchdown run. Brought to you by Leland Smith Insurance Services. And he just did get inside the end zone there to make it 7-6. Yeah, and a great answer by Spencerville's offense. Uh, Crestview scored. Spencerville basically had a drive all the way down the field and uh, put this ball in the end zone, mostly running the football. Bearcats come on to kick the extra point as Emerson Lehman. Splits the uprights to make it 7-7 here in the early going in the second quarter, breaking the action at a break on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Carey Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. And the Carey Insurance scoreboard reads 7-7 between Crestview and Spencerville after a, oh, what is that, an eight-play 
53 yard touchdown, 63 yard touchdown. Math is hard, Scott, 63 yard touchdown. <laughs> Eight play, 63 yard touchdown drive for the Bearcats to tie it up on the carry insurance scoreboard. Well, and I like it, it was really good distribution of the football. They passed a little bit, they ran a little bit, they went up the middle, they rolled outside. So they did a lot of variety on, on, on that particular drive. Good job by the play caller. I believe that's Chris Summers that calls the play. And uh, Rick Orr, I believe, runs the defense now. Orr's a wild one. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. And if you're a Spencerville <laughs> wild one, that's a. Well, you know, he's uh, he's been co coaching football here for a long time. A absolutely great human being, as, as are all the coaches. I tell you what, Scott, you, you see some of these football coaches. They'll be the head coach somewhere for 20 years, and then they'll be like, I'm going to go coach offensive line somewhere. Basketball coaches, when they're done, they're done. Yeah. They're you're not going to see any. When basketball coach says he's retired, he's retired. Some of these football coaches, they just can't get it out of their blood. That's right. That's right. So the Bearcats have the ball now teed up at the 40-yard line, and they'll kick it away as Emerson Laban has the football on the team. With 10.46 to go here in this second quarter, Cressy will get the football back. And I feel like Spencerville has grabbed the momentum a little bit here. They had a turnover that they were able to recover, and then when they got the ball again, they went down and scored. So, and Lehman just kicks it through the end zone. And I, I tell you, Scott, that's a that's a powerful weapon there for a high school football team. If you can make your opponent have to go 80 yards every time you you get the football, that's a tough task to ask for some varsity offense. Well, and I think, uh, you, you know, in high school football, if you can kick it through the end zone like that, you eliminate the chance for that big play, that big yeah. return that uh, a lot of times can be a game breaker, a game changer. Yeah. Uh, you allow your defense to get on the field, get set, understand their responsibilities, and then execute. Knights scored a touchdown on their last timeout. We'll see if – and that was an 87-yard drive after 11 plays for Crestview. So they've shown they've got the ability to go – the length of the field here is they'll send Putman in motion. He'll take the handoff on the jet sweep. Has to be patient for his blockers now. Reverses field completely, and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Josh Henline. That's a big play from their safety. Yeah, it is a big play, but excellent play by number 26, Carter Lehman. Stayed home on that. Did not get fooled by the reverse by the jet sweep, and uh, he basically caused Putman to say, whoops, stop, turn around. I'm going the other way. Henline cuts him down for a loss of two, which will bring up second and 12 here for the Knights. Leaf behind Hunter. He'll turn and fire to Isaac Klein. Makes one man miss, and he's brought down by Lehman. But that's still behind the line of scrimmage as well, I believe. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of that play. Put your athlete in space, let them see what they can do. Number 13 for Spencerville, Hayden. Uh, yeah, Heyman. Hayden Heyman able to slow he, him down there. He, yeah, he, he missed that tackle. He's got to make that tackle. And, uh, you know, but the good part is um, excellent player. He'll get it the next one. He was able to slow him up enough to where he had uh, reinforcements. So third and 13 here for Crestview. Is Hunter looks to go deep down the far side or down the middle of the field, excuse me. Ball's tipped up. A fantastic play on the football by Dylan Short. Nearly got the interception on the dive as Putman was the intended receiver. But it's going to bring up fourth and long. Yeah, Spencerville is in man coverage. I watched all four of the receivers. They're all completely covered up. There wasn't a chance. And and uh, so Crestview took a shot here. And uh, great play by number 10, Dylan Short. Dylan Short tipped the football up. And a smart play on third down, rather than intercept the football, knock it down. Force a punt. Force a punt where you got a chance to uh, maybe make a big play, get a return. So Garrett Yinger will be back deep to punt for Crestview. Rugby style, puts boot to the ball. It's a wobbler, and that's a great bounce for the Spencerville Bearcats. Roll off the side of Yinger's foot. It rolls out of bounds at the 27-yard line and the Bearcats will have excellent field position. Yeah, that's something that Crestview did not want to do for sure. So Spencerville, great field position at, their, at the Crestview 27-yard line with 9-12 to go here in this second quarter. Bearcats coming off a touchdown. And Scott, we mentioned it in the pregame. This game has came down to the wire 
a couple of different times over the course of the last five years or so. Last year's game, a 29-28 thriller won by the Bearcats. We've got another tight one here in the second quarter. Headline brought down in the backfield on the sack was Evan Walls of Crestview. As Henline took, or excuse me, number 66, Connor Sheets with the sack for the Knights. You see Sheets there in the middle of your screen. He's a big guy, man. Just brings it right out there. He jumps on your back, you're going down. But uh, real, really good response by Crestview after the punt. Yeah. That pushes Spencerville back to second and 20. But it's interesting, Coach Lotzenheiser said, talked about the special teams game before the game mm -hmm. and said that, you know, he, he really felt like Friday night special teams was, was going to be a big play for one of the other teams. And uh, I, I feel like that punt may have been yeah. a big play for Spencerville. Carter Lehman on the carry there. Yeah, Sheets gets another tackle for Crestview. And while that punt was a big play, Crestview's D has responded by you know, shoving Spencerville back and then only allowing a yard there to bring up third and long. Third and long. I'd look for Coulter deep here, maybe on an in route. So Henline in the shotgun. Coulter lined up in the slot to the right. Looking right, fires, left it a little short of Nate Coulter as Parker Spieth on the coverage for Crestview. And that'll bring up fourth and about 15. And you're kind of in no man's land here. I can't imagine. I mean, Emerson Lehman does have a, a pretty decent leg on him. I don't know if you try out the field goal unit or you try to pooch a punt. Here you go for it on fourth and 15. There's not really a whole lot of great options on fourth and 15 at the at your own 32-yard line. Yeah, I think you got to take a shot here, um, you know, down the field. Henline's got a good enough arm. you got good receivers out there. they got uh, three, three by one. They're sending four out. And oh, he quick punts. Henline will pooch punt. Bounces it inside the five-yard line, but it will roll into the end zone. He's got to work on his wedge game, you know. <laughs> that back a, a spin, so game. it hits and, and pulls back instead of bouncing on into the end zone. Yeah, a lot of people can drive it. A lot of people can putt <laughs> it, Scott, but not many people can I, chip it. And I, I work on that all the time. I'm just, uh, you know, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. And I'm sure that, you know, the, the pooch punt out of the shotgun is probably something they work on literally on Thursdays. Um, just one of the last things you work on that um, you're not. Yeah, and I mentioned that, you know, in the first quarter. That's one of the the advantages you have where your quarterback is your punter and your punter is your yeah. quarterback. So you have that flexibility. You can look at the defenses. If you, if you have something that's obvious, um, you know, you go ahead and take it, otherwise you punt it away. So a 7.43 remaining here in the second quarter. Crestview will get the football back at their own 20-yard line. As you see James Lotzenheiser talking to Carson Hunter, calling the first play here of this drive after the Knights punted the football away after a three and out their last time out. Well, and really, uh, you know, no, 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 nothing hurt because basically Crestview yep. started at the 20, didn't do much, punted it away, had a bad punt. Crestview, uh, Spencerville did not capitalize on that. Crestview has the ball again at the 20. Braxton Leith, the handoff for the Knights. He races out to the 30-yard line. He's got the Union Bank first down and a little bit more. A gain of 14 there for Braxton Leith moves the chains. Yeah, and that's just pure effort. He's obviously spent time in the squat rack. Just a great job of uh, keeping his feet moving, keeping his legs moving, and picking up the first down. So first and 10 from their own 34-yard line. After the Union Bank first down, as Carson Hunter will bark out instructions to his offensive line. The 6'2 senior in a pistol with Leith behind him. Two receivers to each side. Leith the handoff out to the outside once again, and another nice open field tackle by Henline. I tell you, Crestview has not had much success running the ball on the edge. They, they've really, uh, Spencerville's defense, the, the, their outside contained guys, safety's coming up making tackles. Crestview's having trouble running outside. They've had some success running the football up the middle. But the outside, uh, the outside rushing has been contained by Spencerville pretty well so far. Second and nine, they'll send Parker Spieth out wide to the left of the formation, the bottom of your screen. Spencerville almost impressed coverage. They're completely 
Hunter will keep it himself after the long read. Got out to about the 40-yard line. A gain of five there by Carson Hunter on his carry. Bring up third and five. Spencerville really compacting their defense. They had uh, everybody, their two deep guys were only about seven yards off the football. And they're in that formation again right now, which really allows them to bring those two into play on run plays. Well, three consecutive runs called by the Knights. The first one went for a Union Bank first down, which they're trying to pick up here on third and five. You got to be careful of play action. And that's exactly what we get, a play action pass. Hunter rolling. Now we'll fire here to the near sideline. And Isaac Klein, or excuse me, Kellen Putman, Kind of lost the football. Well, you remember when Spencerville had the football, we talked about how they how they roll the quarterback to the receiver and shorten that pass. That was a really long pass by Carson. It came from one side of the field all the way to the other side of the field, about 30 yards downfield. So probably a 50-yard pass in the air. Very difficult to, to complete. So fourth and five, the Knights will bring the punt unit out. Garrett Yinger on to do the punting honors is Nate Coulter and Carter Lehman back deep to receive for Spencerville. Fourth and five, we saw Crestview fake a punt last week. Instead, Yinger. Yinger will, averages about 27 yards a punt. And the ball will bounce right at the 25 yard line and take a Crestview roll to the 20. So the Bearcats will start their drive on the 20 yard line. 5.24 remaining here in this first half. Bearcats went three and out the last time. Got sacked on first down, and really once they got behind the chains, it's tough to make up when you're second and 17. It, 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 that's a tough situation to find yourself in. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. Both of these teams have, don't have great records, but, but I feel like we're watching pretty good football right now on both sides of the football. Um, Pretty good defenses on both sides. Pretty good offenses. The offenses are moving the football. Uh, defensively, each side has certainly came to play here in this first half because the Bearcats will send three receivers wide and hand off to Carter Lehman straight up the middle of the field. A whole host of white shirts there to stop Lehman right at the line of scrimmage, maybe a half yard gain there on first down. Plus. Yeah, sometimes you just got nothing. And uh, that's what Carter Lehman ran into there, a wall of white shirts. And you see Cress, you sprinting to the football as Ren Sheets was the, made the initial contact. And Cress, you said, hey, on, def on defense, we've got to remain physical because uh, Spencerville's going to bring that as they'll throw it out wide to Dylan Short in the open field. Jukes one man, but still a gain of just about two or three there for Dylan Short's ninth reception of the season. Yeah, I love that play, the quick screen there. But you see uh, Josh doesn't even twist. He just twists his hips, throws the ball very quickly, almost immediately. That's a tough throw to make, uh, especially when you're rotating towards your throwing arm. So third and four for the Bearcats at their own 27-yard line. I guess yeah, the 26-yard line. As Henline going to keep it himself off right tackle. Got to the 35-yard line for a Union Bank first down. We approach four minutes to go here in this first quarter. Yeah, and just good decision by Josh. You, you can see when he puts the football in the belly of the running back, he's looking at the defensive end. If that defensive end commits inside or, or doesn't show outside contain, then he's going to pull it and run it to the – to that side of the field. He's done a good job of making the right read so far. Tonight's first down is brought to you by Union Bank. Union Bank is committed to you as the Bearcats have first and 10. They'll sling a screen looking for Nate Coulter. A little low and it's a bring up second and 10. Coulter who leads the NWC in receptions, yards and touchdowns has been relatively quiet here in this first half. Crestview's done a nice job of trying to bottle him up. Yeah, when you talk about Josh Henline, he's got uh, almost 1,500 yards passing. And then, uh, as you mentioned, on the receiving side, Nate Coulter, Nate's got almost 700, almost half of those uh, 
you know, so so obviously that's they're, they're the primary connection. Yeah. They're the A connection. And uh, fortunately, Spencerville has been using other receivers, and they've been doing well tonight. Headline scrambles, throws back, looking for short, or Heyman, excuse me. And that was a little short of Hayden Heyman, and that'll bring up third and long here after a second consecutive incompletion. Well, both those completions, Josh Henline is backpedaling. He's running backwards, away from a defender, having to throw the ball off his uh, heels, not getting enough juice on it. And as you can see there, it falls short. And, uh, you know, got to give him a little bit of time. I feel like he's got a pretty good arm, makes good decisions. You got to give him time. 331 to play here in this first half. Tied at seven on the carry insurance scoreboard. Big third and ten here for both sides in the closing stages of this first half. Henline, two receivers split out wide to each side. They'll drop back to pass. Pump fakes looking for short down the near sideline. Has it behind oh. the defense in his hands, and he let it go at the last moment. That's a tough catch for short to make as Parker Spieth might have broken the concentration there as we do have a penalty flag down. Yeah, I think it was a great throw, absolutely great throw under pressure. Josh is hit right as he's throwing there. You can see, and he drops it perfectly. Short gets two hands on it. I thought he was going to come up with it. Just a great effort on both ends. I believe we have a hold against Crestview defensively that's going to give Spencerville a little new life. So that's a Union Bank first down via the penalty. Yeah, our officials uh, tonight, we have, we'd never introduced them, but it's David Lucas, Gene Bridenstein, Jeffrey Brooks, Craig Kuferberg, and Kevin Kennett. So the ball now at the 46-yard line. First and 10 here for the Bearcats. Fake the run to Carter oh. Lehman, looking for Short out wide. I think Short was looking for anybody other than him to have the football thrown to him. Yeah, and I, interesting, the Crestview defensive back was looking at the receiver trying to match up, and the ball flew literally right by his helmet. I thought he could have picked it off if he just wasn't. Uh, reverse field there just for a second. Yeah, that was number 88, Raiden Parrott. So the third consecutive incompletion here for the Bearcats brings up second and 10 as they'll send Coulter and Summers to the right. Short and Heyman to the left. As Henline back to pass, has time. Pressured, fires down the middle of the field looking for Summers. But that pressure forces the throw a little early and a ring up third and 10. Yeah, again, throwing off your back foot, throwing off your heels not really driving through the football, causes it to be short. So 3.15 to go here in this first half. Tied at seven. Crest, you gets the football to start the second half, keep in mind. This headline goes back in the gun. Third and 10 at the 46 yard line. Have to get to the 44 of Crestview. We got a stoppage in play and a Penalty flag. Got a false start against the Bearcats. So that'll make it third and 15. Certainly might change things here on the, for the Bearcats on what the play call might be. Well, I feel like both these teams are kind of on target for their season averages, right? They score 20 points a game, 7-7. Seven, seven. We're kind of, uh, you know, a third of the way through the game. But defensively, Spencerville has been giving up about 40 a game almost. And uh, so I, I feel like they're ahead of the plan mm -hmm. with that, doing a pretty good job on the defensive side of the football. So we'll see how Crestview does. Henline. Now we'll step up in the pocket and try to run for the Union Bank first down. He got the Union Bank first down. He needed to get to the 44. He got to the 42 and a half. So Josh Henline, a 15 and a half yard gain there on third and 15, picks up the first down. Yeah, he's deceptively quick. I thought he was going to step, you know, run out of bounds earlier, and he decides to kind of plant that right foot and cut it up field a little bit, picks up enough for the first down. So that keeps the drive alive. That's a heady play by the senior quarterback. As the Bearcats want to get inside that Matt's heating and cooling red zone. Two to the right, two to the left. Layman to the left of Henline in the gun. First and 10, plenty of time to throw. He'll throw down the middle of the field looking for short, a little short of short. 
and that'll bring up second and ten. Yeah, Short had a step there. He he had uh, he had an inside position and he had about a step on the defensive back from Crestview, but the ball was just a little short. That'll short st thrown. Stop the clock with three minutes to go here in this first half. And the ball at the 43-yard line. It was homecoming tonight here at Spencerville, and we heard as we were walking off the field, Gabby Croft was crowned yes. the homecoming queen. So congratulations to uh, Gabby and Wes and Jody. And Got a timeout here called by the Bearcats. They want to talk things over for just a moment. We'll step aside and talk things over as well. Tied at seven, closing stage of the second quarter here on WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Bearcats picking up a couple of Union Bank first downs on this drive. It started at their own 20-yard line. They're out now to the Bear or to the Knight, excuse me, 43-yard line. Here in the closing stages of quarter number two, tied at seven on the carry insurance scoreboard here. And Scott, we got, we got a little disjointed here in the second quarter, or in the mid stage of the second quarter. We had some flow to the game here, but some incompletions, some penalties have really kind of made this a wonky second quarter. Yeah, and I think uh, that was a good timeout right there. You know, you got timeouts, it, it, you can't, they don't carry right. over, so you might as well use them. I think it was a good job of the coach to, to stop action, kind of talk about it, reset, and then come back and see what they can do. They'll send Carter Lehman in motion, fake to him, as headline will keep it off, tackle to himself, out to the 38-yard line. A gain of about six there yeah, by the senior quarterback. Garrett, I'm not sure if that was a fake. It looked like uh, Josh might have mishandled the snap a little oh, yep, bit. Oh, yeah, a little bit. And uh, so at that point, you tuck it and you run. You don't want to compound the mistake. So it's third and about five. for the Bearcats as they'll watch the clock tick down under two and a half to play here in this first half. Summers and Heyman to the left, Short and Coulter to the right on third and five. And line as all day, a penalty flag thrown. Didn't get to the Union Bank first down marker. Yeah, and where that penalty flag was thrown, it's gotta be holding. And we'll see what Crestview wants to do there. If you accept the penalty, you give Spencerville another crack at it, but it, Will be fourth and short if they yeah, decline. Number 52 on the offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat so they will hand. accept the penalty flag. And they'll bring up third and long here for the Bearcats. Yeah, and that was on Brody Summers. Coach's son. He'll probably have some late night conversation about that later. <clears throat> so the ball will push it back, or the penalty, excuse me, will push the football back inside. Spencerville's own territory. Third and uh, Third. about 22 or 23. And now Crestview will call a timeout after getting a look at what timeout. Spencerville Crestview. drew up. Breaking the action and a break here on WOSN. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all your insurance needs. Bearcats trying to put a Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown on the board as we're tied at seven here between the Spencerville Bearcats and the Crest Unites. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Scott Nurse. We're bringing you all the action here in this NWC matchup between the one and six Bearcats and the three and four Knights. And we third and 22 here, Scott, and you had plenty of time to talk about what you wanted to draw up. Yeah, and I think a good timeout by Crestview. What they're thinking now is if it's probably a passing play, right? If they can get an incompletion here, hold the Bearcats short of the first down, um, you know, then, then they get the football back yeah. with a lot of time on the clock, enough time that they can maybe do something with it. So third and 22, we'll see what the Bearcats dial up here as Summers and Heyman to the left and Coulter and Short to the right. Henline stands in the pocket, fires down the right sideline. And a nice defensive play there made by Parker Spieth as he just kind of boxed out Dylan Short for making sure nobody made the reception. It'll bring up fourth and 22. Yeah, I was watching all the receivers there. They were all very well covered. You know, Crestview does a nice job defensively in the in the secondary of, of coverage. Really good job there. So a 155 to go here in the second quarter. You know, there aren't a lot of plays in the playbook for, you know, third and 22. 
So uh, sometimes you just got to heave it. That doesn't work, then punt it away and, and, and play defense. Now fourth and 22, Henline will get the quick boot once again. It's a high spiraling kick that will bounce inside the 20-yard line, take a Spencerville bounce inside the 10-yard line before it's down at the 8. <laughs> this is the Bearcats. Aiden Heyman tries to shoo it a little farther. Well, he's a senior, so he gets to touch it and pick it up. He's, so, got, the, you know. he's got the heady play on him. Yeah. Well, Heyman, Hayden Heyman was, uh, when I worked at 93, on the fan, was our intern one summer. And the worm, as we like to call him. Nice. Great kid. The ball will be spotted at the nine-yard line. So, Cressy, a long way to go to get in field position for a field goal position, I should say. They've got 140 to go and a couple of timeouts, or one timeout, I should say. And I think you got to be careful here. you got to make sure that you do something safe. You don't want to give up the football and a fumble or an interception well, down, down this deep in, in the Bearcat territory. Kellen Putman, the man in motion. They'll hand off to Braxton Leaf. Or, excuse me, Isaac Klein gets the carry out to the 14-yard line, so a gain of six there for Klein on first and ten. Yeah, we, we mentioned uh, Klein's a workhorse. He gets the football an awful lot running the football and uh, somebody that you trust to carry the football and not uh, give it up. Knights moving quickly with two receivers split out wide to each side as Hunter in a shotgun looking to throw. He'll turn and fire oh. as Putman got, a, or excuse me, Jared Harding, the intended receiver, got mixed up there on the crossing routes here with the, between these two outside receivers. And Hunter threw it right as he got tripped up with the feet of another Knight. Yeah, I, I actually thought it was a really nice throw um, by Carson. It was just a little wide. I'm not sure uh, what happened there. It was just a little stop route. I don't know if uh, Harding didn't come back to the football or if uh, yeah, so Carson just ran yeah. it a little wide. Harding was the inside receiver, and they tried to kind of crisscross those receivers, and they got tripped up as they'll sling it out to Isaac Klein here on third and ten. Had to get to the 19-yard line. He got very close to a Union Bank first down. I believe he did pick up the Union Bank first down. Yeah, the chains are moving. But so is the clock here once they uh, the restart. Just slings it over the head of a Bearcat defender. Yeah, nice effort there, nice tackle there by number 13 for the Bearcats. Yeah, Hayden Heyman on the stop. Hayden Heyman. So we approach one minute to go here in this first half. Hunter in the gun. They'll send Harding in motion. That's Hunter looks to throw down the far sideline and has a man. Left it a little short for Jared Harding. The ball pops up in the air and it's incomplete. Wow. Harding had about a 10 yard he was cushion and Carson just didn't have enough on the football to get it to him. He, he had to come back. He had to actually stop and come back to the football. Uh, otherwise, there would have been six on the board for Crestview. So under a minute to go here in this first half. Second and 10 for the Knights. Isaac Klein in the backfield behind Hunter in the pistol. He's a senior quarterback. Dumps it off to Klein. He's got a bevy of blockers out in front of him. Makes one band miss. Pulled out of bounds at the 35-yard line by Josh Henline. But that's enough for a Union Bank first down on the screen. Well, Henline's a pretty sure tackler back there, but... By Number 54 for the Bearcats. He, he's got to make that tackle. Josh Schindler, you see him miss there on that tackle, one-on-one. -on -one. Just didn't break down enough, and so Henline comes up and makes a tackle, but now they've got a first down. So the Knights with the ball at the 35-yard line. On a first and 10. Hunter in the pocket, turns to his right, fires. It's caught, a penalty flag thrown. The bottom of the screen. And it's a holding. Pass was caught by Ren Sheets, but it's going to push the football back 10 yards. Yeah, it was a nice play, but right as uh, Carson's thrown the football, the official was also throwing the flag. Number 53, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still second down. So 42 seconds remain. You're in this first half, and that'll bring up first and 20. 
You know, I just looked down, number 53 is Brady Dunnigan, sophomore. Uh, Spencerville has a lot of freshmen, sophomores yeah. on the field playing and contributing, which is, you know, it's, it's great to see. In, in th this particular case, Brady got called for a penalty, but he's on the field. He's playing. He's learning. He's figuring it out. And, uh, you know, that can do nothing but help you you know, next year and the year beyond. Yeah, both both squads building for the future here in the late stages of the season. First in 22 for the Knights. They'll hand off to Isaac Klein. He'll try to bounce it outside. He's still in the open field. Isaac Klein reverses field. He's got the Union Bank first down and more. Shoved out of bounds just past the midfield stripe. Nate Coulter makes the tackle, but a big run for Isaac Klein puts the Knights into Bearcat territory. Man, he runs hard, doesn't he? I yeah. mean, he just runs hard. Seems Starts all the way to one side of the field and brings it back to the other. Constantly, but, those legs churn it. Well, you know, my advice to a running back is to run where they aren't. Yep. That certainly you're gonna helps. Have, you're going to have more success if you run where they ain't. Especially if that's the hit you're going to take at the end <laughs> of your, your big run there as Nate Coulter got a nice forearm shiver to the back of the sophomore running back to set him down, but it is. First and 10 for the Knights after the Union Bank first down, and they're inside Bearcat territory with 20 seconds to go here in this first half. Hunter looking to throw. Scrambles, and now will sling to Klein and threw it a little behind him there as Klein's moving forward. That's a tough pitch and catch there with both guys on the run. Well, again, we talked about, you know, youth. That Carson, Carson's a sophomore, too. He's a young guy out there just learning the ropes. And, and I talked about that earlier when Josh Henline threw a pass. When you're throwing to the right and you're a right-handed quarterback, you, 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 have to, you have to make a conscious effort to turn your shoulders yeah. and your feet and up, square them and, and make that play. If you're throwing on the run to your right, and you're not Patrick Mahomes, then <laughs> not uh, many, not many are. Then the success rate is seriously challenged. So two wide receivers split out wide to each side. Harding now will make it three. They'll hand off to Leith on second and ten. Leith to the 43-yard line and a timeout called by the Knights with six seconds to go here in this first half. We'll step aside at the conclusion of the first half when we return. Tied at seven here on WOSN. We're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.TV slash John Reed. And, and Garrett, they don't have to be the head coach. They can be an assistant yeah. coach. They can be uh, e even the lower level coaches, uh, junior high, but uh, somebody who exemplifies those leadership characteristics. So six seconds remain here in this first half. Ball at the 44-yard line of the Spencerville Bearcats. So Crestview still with one timeout, but six seconds doesn't give you a whole lot of time to accomplish more than one play. So we'll see what the Knights dial up here. It's Harding the man in motion. They had him deep one of the last times they ran this. Hunter flushed from the pocket. He's just going to have to step up and run it himself, and he'll step out of bounds to end the half. So that'll do it for the first half of play. One touchdown scored by each side on the carry insurance scoreboard. Makes it 7-7 at the halftime break. We'll step aside and come back with third quarter action here on WOSN. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Second half about to get underway here between Spencerville and Crestview. And Scott, I'll be darned if we don't have another barn burner brewing between the Knights and Bearcats. They, they Every time they tango on a gridiron, it is, it is spectacular. Well, I've had three sons play for Spencerville, uh, as most people know, and, and literally – Every time those two teams played, I'm going to say most, almost every game came down to the last play or the last series. It was a super close game, and uh, my nephew Derek Goki just getting tapped on my shoulder. He's an assistant coach for Spencerville, and he says, another barn burner. Uh, it's a, it's and so, uh, you know, th that's what you get here. And, and by the way, uh, that shot we had opening up there, you know, with the lights shining and everything, the field looks great. 
I mean, it's it's I, it's so amazing to me that all these high schools now have turf fields, yeah. and it just it's fantastic to play on. It's great for you know almost any kind of weather, and uh, I, I know they're being utilized by many sports, and and it just looks great here. ADs have been good to us tonight. They had food up here yeah. for us and drinks and you know, and, and you know what for I, all the crew. And I, is this this is week eight? I, that might be the first time I haven't had pizza or wings. Yeah. In the press box, I'll take a chicken Alfredo anytime. Yeah, I can it was get fantastic. It. You know, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, and spaghetti and I will it, accept that. It's full on Italian, garlic bread included at any time. So Emerson Lehman has the football teed up. He'll boot it away. It's caught inside the goal line, and that's an automatic touchback. Isaac Klein wanted to return the football out, but once he crosses the goal line in high school football, well, that'll do it. So with 12 minutes to go here in the third quarter, Crestview will start at their own 20-yard line. Carson Hunter brings the offense back out onto the field. The 6'2 senior. Be joined in the backfield by Braxton Lee. Isaac Klein wind up as the wing, lined up as the wingback, the man in motion. Leith the handoff. He'll try to bounce it outside. Gain out to the 25-yard line, so a five-yard gain there for the freshman running back on first and ten. You know, you mentioned at the top and when we when we were going through keys to the game and that about uh, both coaches had said, you know, they wanted to have fun tonight. Yeah. They really wanted to have fun and, and make it enjoyable for the kids. And I think sometimes – that relaxes the team and relaxes players. And, and I think we've seen some pretty good football. We're in for a really good football game. It's tied up at halftime. Who knows where this game's going to go? And I'm sure, uh, you know, it's tied 7-7 at the half. You go into the half and say, we have fun there in the first half. And I would say probably both sides are saying, yeah, it is fun. As Hunter looks to throw downfield and hit the turf on the throw for Ren Sheets. Makes it third and five after the incompletion. Yeah, just a little low there. That's tough when you're running to get down to your ankle level. Probably a throw away. Yeah, you're just one of those. It's tough to stop dead in your tracks and, and go down and catch the football. It's easy to go up and get it, mm -hmm. but going down to get it's a little bit more difficult. Klein, the man in motion. They'll hand off to Leith on third and five. Tries to make one man miss, needs to get to the 30. He got to the 29. He's cut down. Henline came in like a missile to stop Leith, just shy of the first down marker. And that'll make Crestview think about things. Not, not for very long, though. They've got the offense still on the field, lined up in the eye formation on fourth and one. Hunter under center. He'll just shove straight ahead to try to pick up the Union Bank first down, and he's got it. When I like that call, you're deep in your own territory, but there's a lot of time on the clock yet if something were to happen. But I like that they go pace, they go quick, and before Spencerville is really set, Carson just reads the hole, gives the center a little tap on the rear. They snap it when ready, and he picks up the first down. They'll line up back in their pistol formation with Leith behind Hunter. High snap. Leith takes the handoff, has a blocker in front of him. Turned back inside after the initial hit made by Brody Summers. But it's still a gain of about three yards there for Leith. And Leith is a nice runner. He's got 20 carries, 172 yards coming into the game, which is about a seven and a half yards per carry. He does a nice job of spinning out of that initial contact and picking up a couple extra yards. Ten minutes approaching here in this third quarter. Leith the handoff again. Squirt straight up the middle. It's met by Royce Kill. We got a scrum. And they'll just keep shoving. And now the whistle will be blown, but it's enough for a Union Bank first down. Well, they picked up about six yards on the scrum. They were initially short of the first down. And uh, it became about a 20-man 20, 20 yeah, It starts scrum. as one-on-one -on -one there, yeah. and then you got a whole pile of just shoving, pulling, Everybody trying to move in different directions. Well, and credit Leith for keeping his legs going, keeping the power moving ahead. So first and 10 for the Knights at their own 45-yard line with two wide receivers. They'll send Klein in motion and hand off to Leith once again. Leith met in the backfield. Can't complete the tackle. Could Josh Schindler. But Henline comes up, cuts down Leith 
for a big loss. Yeah, and that's uh, you know, good job. I similar to read that and basically set up Henline to come in and clean it up. And you know, that's a great advantage that Spencerville's defense, the way they're aligned, they play, uh, they just play cover two, but the two they've got are only about seven yards off the line of scrimmage. So as soon as they see run, immediately recognize and they come forward to make plays. Another carry this time by Jared Harding. He gets back past the original line of scrimmage out to midfield. Jared Harding takes the handoff for the Knights. So that'll bring up third and about five. Gain of nine there by Harding on the carry. Take a look at the replay. And really, that's one of the uh, one of the first real successful runs to the boundary, to the edge that I've seen tonight. Most of their success has come up the middle. So they got to get to the 45 from here on third down. Two running backs in the backfield with Hunter. Two wide receivers, or excuse me, one wide receiver split out wide to each side. He's As open. Hunter's got speed to the bottom of the screen. Doesn't have time to set up shop and throw it, though. He'll throw it up, nearly intercepted by Dylan Short as he was covering Kellen Putman. Yeah, you, you said it. Parker Spieth had about 10 yards on his on his uh, defender from Spencerville, number 13. And I, I think Carson, Carson Hunter saw him, but he just he had to scramble and couldn't set up shop to, to fire it down this near sideline that he needed. Yeah, absolutely. So fourth and five for the Knights right at midfield. And really, Scott, they've shown the ability that if they don't pick this up, you know, they gave Spencerville the football the 28-yard line one time in the first half and were able to get a stop. So you got to like your chances from the 50. So they're going forward on fourth and five. Hunter looking across the middle of the field. It's He's caught. Enough. And it's incomplete. The ball squirted out of Ren Sheets, was right at the first down stick. But when the ball got there, so did a Bearcat defender. And it's a turnover on downs by the Knights. Yeah, I think that was 71. Logan Johnson, a senior outside linebacker, 5'10", 230. He met the receiver right after the ball arrived and was able to jar it loose. So with 8.36 to go in the third quarter. They had the first down, though. Yeah, it was you know? right at the first down stick. He was going to have it if he could corral it. Instead, the ball goes to the Bearcats with the nose of the football right at the midfield stripe. Great field position. So Henline. We'll go back to work by my very unofficial stats. I've got headline for 3 of 14 in the first half through the air, but he did have the touchdown run for the Bearcats. Well, it just feels like he's played a lot better than that, and I think in all the other phases he's played really well. He's sacked for a loss there as Putman, Liam Putman, gets this sack on first down. You know, Garrett, that was one of our, uh, the number one key to the game was D it up. And I think both teams have really come to play yeah. defensively. They really have put the pressure on, 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 on the opposing team's quarterbacks. They've done a good job against the run. And as evidenced here, midway through the third quarter, 7-7. Seven, seven. Get a stoppage in play as he'll snap the helmet back up of Blake Summers, the tight end there at the bottom of your screen. So a tight end and a wing lined up for the Bearcats on second and 11. They'll run the option to the far side. Pitch out wide to Carter Lehman. Lehman out in the open field. He's got the Union Bank first down and a couple of more yards. A gain of 14 by Carter Lehman moves the sticks. Yeah, and he went 12, 13 yards before he even was touched. Really nice play call. He only had a single receiver on that right side. I think it was Coulter out there did a nice job blocking. Henline made the right read and got it to Lehman. And first down. So the ball now at the 37-yard line of Crestview as Spencerville gets into night territory on the second play of the drive. Heyman and Summers to the right. Short and Coulter to the left. As Henline pressured, gets through the grasp of Wesson Ludwig. Stiff arms another tackler, is able to fire it ahead. And the official will say Henline's down back where he got rid of it rather than the incomplete pass. Yeah, it's interesting. A rule change this year. It was just this year that if the quarterback is outside of the tackle box, he can throw it out of bounds, no receiver in the area. I think that's what Henline was trying to do. A great job of escaping there. 
I, I don't like him carrying the ball around in one hand. Oh, that is a good call, though. His right knee did hit the turf. Yeah, it did. Right before he got rid of it. And he, he had Blake Summers here, so it would have been in the area. Now, I don't know if Summers ever, if he was a Olympic long jumper or high jumper, could have caught the football. But that that was a good, you know, I heard, you know, fans in the Bearcat stands are saying there's no way he was down. That's a, that's a good look at it from our WOSN crew that he was, in fact, down. Yeah. So second and 18 here is Henline. Pressured will just sling it to a wide open. Hayden Heyman nearly got the Union Bank first down. Hayden Heyman's second reception of the night. Henline finds Hayden Heyman. And again, Henline, great job of escaping, buying a little time, and then setting his feet and making a pretty good throw here. You see him stop and, and sort of set. Puts it right on the mark. So it'll be third and one here for the Bearcats. Look for that option again, that read option. Carter Lehman joining Henline in the backfield. Henline's going to keep it himself. Push backwards. Wesson Ludwig comes up. I don't think he got it. Makes the stop. He's about a yard and a half. Yeah, Might have lost a yard and a half there on third down. Take a look at the replay here. They fake the handoff to Coulter. Henline keeps it himself. Wesson Ludwig nearly makes the stop right there. Yeah, good job by Crestview's defensive end to turn that play back in. You know, typically, you defensive end, you want to go up and you want to be ball depth and uh, kind of hold your position and force the offense, force the running back, the running, the, the, the offensive player back into the middle of the field where you have lots of help, and that's so what they did. Fourth and two, they'll hand off to Carter Lehman. He's gobbled up. I think he's short as well. It's going to be, we, we've had uh, two possessions now, Crestview and now Spencerville, four down territory, fail, fail to convert. Take a look at the replay. Looks like David Saragin makes the stop for Crestview. And that is alternating turnover on downs for both squads here in their first chance in the third quarter. So the ball spotted at the 28-yard line for the Knights as they get their second crack at it here. Yeah, and that was a good job by David Saragin to, to wrap up and then, you know, drive him back short of that first down. Leaf the carry on first and 10 for the Knights. Cuts it back up to the 45, spins out of another tackle. A potentially touchdown saving tackle made by Josh Schindler of Spencerville, but that's a Union Bank first down for Braxton Leaf. Well, it seems like Crestview has made a, a little bit of an adjustment here in the second half. They're having a little more success running the football to the outside here. I don't know if they're bringing more blocking, pulling some linemen to get out there and help, but it's working. First and 10 for the Knights. Ball at the 45-yard line, their own 45-yard line. As Hunter barks out instructions to his offensive line. Wesson Ludwig, the center, stands over the football, ready to deliver it back. Leith behind Hunter in the pistol, and he'll get the carry. Reverses field, stops, reverses once again. Gets out to the midfield stripe, still turning those legs, and he's got another Union Bank first down. Braxton Leith gobbled up about two yards downfield, shoves eight yards farther for his second consecutive first down carry. Well, and I'd say in uh, scrums, Crestview 2, Spencerville 0 here, as you see uh, all these players meeting up, and he just continues to drive his legs forward. It's a good job by the freshman, a 5'10", 150-pound freshman running back, churning those legs to pick up a Union Bank first down. Well, that run was made in the summer in the weight room. Klein to the right, Harding to the left of Hunter in the shotgun on first and 10. They'll hand off to Isaac Klein, the sophomore running back this time. He had no chance against number 67 for Spencerville. That's Isaac Kill on the tackle for the Bearcats. Klein tried to bust it outside and turned it back in, and Isaac Kill wasn't going to let him get any farther. Seems like a really good name for a football player, doesn't it? It does. Huh? A six foot two, 205 pound senior defensive lineman is Hunter going to the top. It's a jump ball and it's dropped by Kellen Putman. Had to adjust to the football. If we get a look at that, you could probably make an argument maybe for offensive pass interference there by Kellen Putman, but 
had to stop and adjust and turn back, turn his hips back towards the sideline as we take a look here. Yeah, he was well covered. I mean, they're they riding into each other's hip pocket, as you can see right there. He just uh, adjusts back to the football and wasn't able to hold on to it. He had to re reverse those hips and drop the football, and you saw the disappointment on his own body language. A penalty flag, though, is going to push the Knights back after a holding call. So the ball now spotted at their own 44-yard line. They've got to get to the 34-yard line of Spencerville for a first down. Two receivers to the right, a tight end and a receiver to the bottom of your screen. It's Harding, the man in motion. He'll fire to Klein out of the backfield. Klein to the midfield stripe. He gets to the 46-yard line. Hen line in on the stop, as was Gavin Schwartz. Get a great look at that replay. Isaac Klein just yeah. carries it out to the 45 on the completed pass. And Javier Franco for Spencerville, a little slow getting up that time. Another sophomore, 5'7", 200-pound lineman. Looks to be okay, though. Bearcats have adjusted to a 3-3-5 defense here in this second half. As the Knights will send Hunter Jones in motion. They'll sling it out to Isaac Klein. And he gets maybe a yard there on third and 13. I tell you what, Spencerville's two deep safeties, Coulter and Henline, don't mind hitting. And you can see uh, number two come into your picture from the left, and he just uh, makes some serious yep. contact. And, uh, and really, I, I think they enjoy that. Yeah, I was going to say, when you're that close to the sideline over there, Nate Coulter knows he can throw a, a shoulder or a chicken wing because at worst it's going to bounce this guy out of bounds, and you, you can deliver a blow that way. And he's done that a couple of times here tonight. So fourth and 11 for the Knights. Carson Hunter in the pocket, now flushed from the pocket. Rolling will fire, and it's caught by Spieth right at the first down marker. It still hasn't been blown dead. Now they'll finally blow the play dead. So the ball's at the 31-yard line, and that is enough for a Union Bank first down. And credit to Carson Hunter, wanted to keep this pass alive. Eyes looking downfield the entire time on this replay. Yeah, fourth down, and you see the officials talking about it. I think it's a good catch. Oh, yeah. But they're going to mark him uh, easy just, just across the line to gain. So it is the first down. The chains are moving. And to get to the 33, got to the 32. So it is a Union Bank first down for the Knights. It's two wide receivers split out wide to each side. Hunter hands off to Clyde. And he's got five yards and more. Isaac Klein in the open field inside the Matt's heating and cooling red zone. Looking for the pylon. Did he get inside the end zone? He did. A 32-yard touchdown scamper by Isaac Klein. A Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown puts Crestview on the board first in the second half. And that's his seventh touchdown on the year. Man, he runs hard. He just runs hard. You can see him here once he kind of cuts to the outside, gets knocked that way. He, he, he's got wheels. A little stiff arm there to get into the end zone, hits the pylon at six. So the Knights will send the field goal unit on to attempt the extra point with under a minute to go here in this third quarter after the 32-yard Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown run by Isaac Klein. Aiden Parrott on to kick the extra point. Nine of 12 coming into the game, so he's now 10 of 13. We've got a gets a practice. False start. Against the Knights, we'll push him back a couple of yards. So 13 to seven to score on the carry insurance scoreboard. And the Knights make the extra point just a hair longer. You can see the flags in the background. They're almost uh, straight out. It's a pretty good wind here. Making it feel a little colder than it is. 
get that you know? north wind whipping here in the fall. It's uh, what's a high of 50 today. It yeah, was not a I, I'm not ready for that. It was like 65 <laughs> yesterday. It's going to do know? the same. I looked, at, I looked at the forecast for next week. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to be 76 throughout the week and then a high of 54 and rain on next Friday. So Barrett on for the extra point. Snap, spot, kick is up, and a kick is good. 11 to 14. Crestview leads Spencerville 14 to 7 here in the third quarter. We'll step aside on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Carey Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. And the Carey Insurance scoreboard reads Crestview 14, Spencerville 7, after a 32 yard touchdown run by Isaac Klein, with just shy of a minute to go here in this third quarter. Made it 14 to seven. And Scott, we talked to uh, Isaac Klein when he runs football, he, he totes that rock hard and he just kept those legs turning and found some open space to pick up that last Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. Well, he does and he has kind of an un unusual gait in the way he runs, but he runs really hard and uh, he's got pretty good wheels and that was a nice run. And now that puts puts uh, Crestview on the scoreboard with 59 seconds left. They're up seven. Well, let's see if Spencerville can answer now. They've had a couple couple good drives, but just kind of uh, you know faltered at the end and weren't able to uh, complete the drive. So let's see what they do this time. Crestview a seven play, 72 yard drive there. It took three, excuse me, 354 off the clock as the ball is now loose, scooped up by Nate Coulter. On the kickoff, Coulter reverses field at the 15-yard line. Couldn't break another tackle, and he's down at the 16-yard line. It's one of the few times Nate Coulter's found himself with the football here tonight. I'm sure he's got to be frustrated that, you know, the leading wide receiver in the NWC uh, hasn't gotten many opportunities with the football so far. No, and that was just a little indecision there. Two guys were back there. The ball's bouncing around. They weren't sure who was going to pick it up. Nate finally picks it up, and he's fortunate. Picks up about seven or eight yards to keep them out of the shadow of their own goal line. So first and 10 for the Bearcats. Ball to their own 17 yard line with under a minute to play here in this third quarter. As Coulter will line up in the backfield with Josh Henline as Carter Lehman will line up in the slot to the left side of your screen. Look for Coulter on a little wheel route out of the backfield. End line has to fire to Lehman. Makes the catch at the 20 yard line to the 25. Carter Lehman's 20th reception of this season. Got out to the 26 yard line. They were trying to find Coulter out of the backfield there. Yeah, Henline's looking left and at the last minute realized he's covered, looks to the right, finds Hayden and that's just all arm. All arm, his feet were flat, got it there. Good arm strength, and they almost got the first down. They're about a yard short. Balls at the 26-yard line. On second and one. They'll run that option that far side once again. Headline will sling it out to Lehman. Makes a couple of guys miss. At the 25-yard line before he's gobbled up, so a loss there for the Bearcats, and that will be the final play of this third quarter. Fourth stands are coming up. We've got another barn burner between the NWC Post, Crestview and Spencerville here on WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank is committed to you. Spencerville Bearcats with the football here with 30 short. The ball. 24 yard line. They've got to get to the 27. Josh Henline, the senior quarterback, lined up in the shotgun with Carter Lehman. Will keep it himself. Off right tackle. He did not get the Union Bank first down. It's going to be fourth and short. Yeah, and coming off the break there, looked to me like a little miscommunication. Josh Henline held it out as if the running back was, uh, you know, there was going to be an option there and no running back showed and so he had to take it himself. Fourth and one here for the Bearcats. Trailing by seven, 14 to seven on the carry insurance scoreboard. They'll stare at the sideline for a long time awaiting instructions here. 
fourth and one as we begin this fourth quarter. Coach Summers calls the offense. Heyman the wing, Lehman in the backfield with Henline. Henline keeps it himself. He's got the Union Bank first down to the 31-yard line. Yeah, and I think that's what they were trying to run the last play. They kind of ran that to the other side, and uh, that, that, that running back, that option that they, they like to look at there where he can either hand it off or pull it and run, and this time he elects to pull it successfully. They get a first down. Jarrett Harding on the stop for Crestview. But it's a Union Bank first down nonetheless for the Bearcats. As Coulter lines up in the backfield with headline. Two receivers split out wide to each side. They'll turn and fire to Coulter. Coulter tries to make a couple of guys miss. Spins down just shy of the 35-yard line. A gain of three there on one of his first opportunities with the football here in, the, in tonight's ball game. Yeah, and that'll go down as a run play. That was a backwards pass, so it'll go down as a lateral. Something to keep in mind, Nate Coulter played quarterback last year for the Bearcats. If they go back to that play, might see a double pass or something like that. They can pull out of the bag of tricks should they need it. Carter Lehman to the right of Henline to the gun. Two wide receivers to each side. Short and Heyman to the left. Summers and Coulter to the right. Henline hangs in the pocket looking for Heyman. Ball's loose. Couldn't corral it. And nice coverage there by Isaac Klein of Crestview. Yeah, he was right at the first down marker too, and I noticed him immediately when they lined up. He had about a 10-yard cushion there in man coverage, and, and the guy who was responsible for him was about 10 yards off the football, and he had an opportunity to make a play there and just uh, wasn't able to complete it. So third and eight here for the Bearcats with under 10 minutes to go here in this fourth quarter. Big play here. And line with Coulter lined up behind him. Looking for Coulter down the middle of the field. He's got the football for a Union Bank first down. Nate Coulter seated at the 48-yard line. Just slipped him right out the backfield, right up the middle of the field. Easy pitch and catch for the Bearcats to move the chains. Well, Henline's under duress here. Defense is coming. He throws off his back foot, goes to Calder, his, you know, his his A receiver, and they make a play, convert the first down. I thought that was a big, important play with clock, you know, winding. We're at nine and a half minutes. There may not be many more possessions in this game. Headline the handoff to Lehman. Reverses field, reverses field again. Ren Sheets there to bottle him up that time, but a gain of two on the first down Come carry. Lane, Clock continues to tick as we approach nine minutes to go here in tonight's ball game. Spencerville said they wanted to play four good quarters. I think defensively they got to feel pretty good about that. Now offensively, I'm sure that you know how coaches are, Scott, that there's always something to work on, always something they can do better. But they also wanted to put together some drives here as Henline will turn and fire to Coulter. He's got the catch. Parker Spieth makes the tackle, though. It's a gain of about two there on forward progress. It'll bring up third and five. Take a look at that replay where Henline spotted Coulter early yeah, in I the think, route. I think the most important thing about that, that replay is you saw Colton, and it's probably why he's one of the he is the leading receiver in the NWC. He went up and he caught that with his hands. He didn't try to trap it in his shoulder pads or catch it in his elbow. He caught it with his hands open, facing the football. Good third, technique. Third and five here for the Bearcats. End line, back to pass. Looks, fires to Coulter. He's brought down by Wesson Ludwig, though, for a loss of about half a yard or so. Well, and the thing you got to be careful of as a quarterback when you get into these situations where you got to have it, you tend to look at one guy, one receiver, and not a bad choice to look at Colton, but yeah. um, but you, you know he was pretty well covered there. You got to make sure that uh, you didn't bypass another option that might have been better. So fourth and six, big play for the Bearcats and the Knights. As Henline takes a step back to pooch punt once again, and we missed it. He missed the punt. Carter Lehman pounces on the football. 
but he missed dropping the football to his right foot. Lehman alertly pounced on it. But we'll take a look at this replay here. As you see, Hemline just take those steps back. And he might have dropped it off of Lehman's elbow there. Yeah, I think uh, I think it hit Lehman's e either hit either Josh's foot or the football hit Lehman's left arm, and uh, not a good situation. Now you give the Crestview Knights the football essentially at midfield. Crestview with 7:27 to go. Took a decent size chunk of time off the clock on their last drive. Isaac Klein can't get through the grasp of number 54 for the Bearcats. That's Josh Schindler was there immediately for the stop. Yeah, and I talked about him earlier in the game. He read that play and missed a tackle. This time he definitely does not miss. He fought, fought hard, brought him down. Schindler a 5'8", 180 pound sophomore. One of those four or five sophomores is playing defensively for the Bearcats and makes a tackle for loss there on first and 10. It'll be second and 12 now for the Knights as Jared Harding gets the carry, and mm. he's brought down. There's a little hitting going on right now by the Bearcats. That's a second straight play where it's pretty good, uh, pretty good wood getting laid out there, as they, they used to say back in the day, you know? Laying the wood. I don't know what that meant, but it meant that somebody right. hit somebody pretty hard. Javier Franco, a 5'7", 200-pound defensive lineman, makes the initial stop there. So third and 11 here for Crestview. Spencerville all man in the secondary. Play action. Hunter rolling to this near sideline, looking to throw. Stops, reverses field. Blake Summers puts the pressure on. He'll fire down the sideline and fire it into the Spencerville sideline. And that's incomplete. Well, I was looking downfield. All four receivers from Crestview were blanketed. I mean, it was hip on hip. Spencerville secondary, good job there of staying with their man in coverage. Forces Crestview to punt. So got to be, got to be careful here. It's fourth and one. Be oh, careful. It's fourth, fourth and eleven. Or eleven. I'm sorry. I'm but, sorry. Uh, well, we saw Crestview. <laughs> we saw Crestview fake a punt last week. Yeah. In a, in a short yarded situation, but Garrett Yanger looking to boot it and he gets it away. Now Coulter oh, touches the football. That. The ball is loose and there's a whole host of white. Did Coulter get back on the ball? They'll sort it out. Nate Coulter did get on the football. Wow, very fortunate there. That's uh, very fortunate. That's something as a junior he'll learn from. Coach is talking to him right now. You either uh, you either field that football or you get away from it. Well, no, you, you understand the frustration that he's wanted to, you know, go get. He wants to make he, a play. He, right, he wants Absolutely. to have the football in his hands. And he's capable of making a play. But, he, but he, when he goes to touch football, he's the only guy wearing black in the screen. Generally not the time to try to scoop up that football. So, Nevertheless, luckily, they luckily have the for football. the Bearcats, they've got the ball. At the 26-yard line. Five and a half minutes, a little more than five and a half. So you got plenty of time. Trailing by a touchdown. Henline turns and fires to Coulter on the bubble screen. He's able to elude one tackler, another. Slips to another tackle. Gets a gain of about five after having to work for it. He's fighting. I mean, you can just see it. You can tell. He's fighting. He wants this win. Coulter wants to make a play, and that's a good thing. So under five and a half to play here in tonight's ball game. 14-7 Crestview on the carry insurance scoreboard. Second and seven for the Bearcats. Summers to the left, alongside with Heyman. Short and Coulter to the right. They'll run the reverse to Coulter. He's out to the 35-yard line. He's got the Union Bank first down. Pushed out of bounds at the 38-yard line by Isaac Klein. 
But a little nifty play there by the Bearcats to get Coulter the football. Yeah, I like Hayden Heyman out here, number 13, blocking, doing some really good blocking. This play takes a while to develop, and you'll see number 13 come into your screen. He's blocking still. Great job there. Great team effort. And I, you feel like you got to, you know, put, a, put somebody on their tail. But really, you just got to get in somebody's way to make sure they're not the one making the tackle. And you saw Hayden Heyman, a nice downfield block there from his wide receiver spot as the Bearcats will hand off to Carter Lehman, and he runs right in to Garrett Yinger and Connor Sheets. But that, that was still pushing ahead. He got to the 42-yard line, so a gain of four there after the initial contact being made right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, this this referee and crew has been very patient, yeah. I'll say, on their whistles. So they're, they're, uh, typically, you see the whistles get blown pretty, pretty early, but they're allowing these scrums to take place. And you can see his forward momentum continues to move forward so they don't blow the whistle dead. Well, no scrums. That's where you, things get a little heated in there when you're just you're, you're shoving one way, somebody's shoving the other. Well, a lot of times people are uh, punching the football, too. That's where you get a fumble. Got to be careful. Henline hangs in the pocket, fires across the middle of the field. Oh. He threw it right to Kellen Putnam. Putnam on the interception and the return out to the 35, still on his feet down the far sideline. And he's brought down inside to Matt's heating and cooling red zone. Miscommunication between headline and I believe the intended target was Dylan Short. Putman undercuts the route. We'll take a look at it here on the replay. Headline gets hit too right as he's throwing the football. You can see, boom, he got hit. And uh, you're right, it, it looks like a little miscommunication. I think he thought Dylan Short was going to stop and he continued to run. And Putnam, Big return. Yeah, takes it all the way down to the Mats Heating and Cooling Red Zone. So Crestview. 3.38 left. And now they the have the football. T, they're going to have it right at the 20-yard line. 3.38 to go. The Knights will hand off to Braxton Leith. Leith outside, down the sideline to the pylon. And they'll mark him out of bounds inside the one-yard line. Well, the referee in the middle of the field has signaled touchdown. Uh -oh, the referee on the far sideline. Okay. So they're going to talk about it. Looks like they're going to mark him short. Yeah, they're, they're going to spot him just at the one-yard line. The referee on the far sideline says it's first and goal. But the PAT, uh, <laughs> I guess, there's still, I don't know, has ever been an official signal, but it's a 20-yard touchdown run on the board. Yeah, and for you're, Braxton Lee. You're right, Garrett. The sideline side official probably should have been the one to signal that because the play was in his corner. So Hayden Perrin on for the extra point. The kick is up and good. Crestview extends their lead with a Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. We take a look at the instant replay. We'll step aside. 21-7. Knights with the advantage on WOSM. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all your insurance needs. A one-play 20-yard touchdown drive by the Crestview Knights. A 20-yard touchdown carry by freshman Braxton Leith. Makes it 21-7, so another Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown for the Knights has them with a two-score lead, Scott. Well, and another freshman making a play out there. You know, we've talked about these underclassmen. Um, you know, both of these teams are down this year, but certainly they have uh, some bright, you know, futures ahead of them because they've got some pretty nice players that are young and uh, still have a lot of football ahead of them. So that, that's good to see. So 3.31 to go in tonight's ball game. Spencerville going to get the football back. Trailing 21-7 to is Hayden Parrott as the football teed up. And it will bounce inside the 10-yard line. Lehman. Grabs it. Will race up the far sideline. Out just shy of the 30-yard line. So that's where Spencerville will set up shop. Brings the ball up to the 26-yard line. So the Bearcat offense will go back to work after the interception on the last drive. Crestview, 16th in Division 7, Region 26, would like to add some computer points to their playoff tally and try to make the postseason once again. Yeah, they're hanging right on the edge there. Of course, a win, 
definitely shouldn't hurt. Hand lines throw to Coulter completed the 30 yard line, so a gain of four on first down. And I'm really surprised to see Crest or uh, uh, Henline uh, throw, run this play uh, just because it's very dangerous. Henline scampering once again out very close to a Union Bank first down. He's brought down to 35, had to get to the 36. So it's going to be third and very short after the run by the senior quarterback. And I, I, I really like. Uh, Spencerville's fight, you know, you can see the effort that both teams are putting forward. Henline will turn and fire to Short. Dylan Short splits a tackle. It's got the first down and more to the 42-yard line. I tell you, Garrett, um, just, we've had the opportunity. Off Dylan Short, we got great sportsmanship here from Wes and Ludwig, Scott, where Dylan Short cramped up and Wes and Ludwig from Crestview immediately picked up his left leg and stretched him out. Well, you know, a lot of these guys have been playing each other since, you know, they were in fifth grade or whatever. They know each other, they're friends. A lot of times they, you know, see each other a lot of places outside of football. So, um, yeah, I'm not Just surprised by that. But both, both organizations, both teams are quality. Yeah. So we'll take a look at some upcoming schedules here on WOSN. Allen East and Bluffton, a first spot on the line in the Northwest Conference. You'll be able to see that on WOSN as well as Ottawa Glendorf and Shawnee. And then volleyball action between St. Henry and Ottawa Glendorf on Sunday night. As to continue to take a look at the schedule. Tiffin, Calvert, and Liberty Benton, two state powers in volleyball, will face off. And then Lipsick and Liberty Benton volleyball. Bluffton and Kaleida boys soccer all this week on WOSN. And then some more quality football action for you next week. A MAC matchup between Coldwater and Versailles, Allen East Lipsick, and a rivalry contest between Minster and New Bremen all coming up in the course of the next week here on WOSN. Henline, pump fakes on the double move, pressured. Now has plenty of room to run here along the near sideline. Josh Henline to the 38-yard line. He'll step out of bounds. It's a Union Bank first down for Henline as they get the ball deeper into Crestview territory. He's got speed. When he turned it on there and decided to run. You can see just a gigantic hole here on the replay where there's just nobody home for the Crestview D. And Henline will step out with a 38. Oh, we got a holding penalty, though, against the Bearcats. I didn't see the penalty flag until the final. Bear, the Bearcats had moved up to the 38-yard line, and instead, they might be back past their own 38-yard line. Yeah, I didn't see it either. And you know, that's uh, that's that's sort of what we've seen a number of times tonight. Is they make a good play, and then they have a penalty, or they have an interception, or a fumble, or. Or, uh, you know, just, just little mistakes here and there that have uh, really been the difference in the game. Henline hangs in the pocket and will fire just as deep as he can. Nate Coulter chasing after the football. Coverage provided by Jared Harding of Crestview. It's incomplete and will bring up third and really long. I started to say uh, earlier before we got, uh, before we had the injured player down, but, you know, you and I had the opportunity to see Crestview last week mm -hmm. play against Columbus Grove. Vast difference, huge difference between last week's play and this week's play. Yeah. And I got to think that a lot of that comes from the quarterback. The defense is good. Yeah. Uh, Crestview's defense has given up, you know, 20 points a game, which keep 18 points a game was keep you in most games. Right. Right. And that's what I think, uh, you know, that quarterback play, if they can get into the playoffs, you know, uh, and hang on at that 16th spot or move up a couple, um, they got a chance to for people to underestimate what they are um, just because of, uh, you know, some of those losses they took when they really didn't weren't at full strength. Ren sheets the sack there of Josh Henline, brings up third and carry the one. It's about third in St. Mary's here for the Bearcats. Henline back to pass. Looking down the field once again, we'll dump it off to Lehman at the 40-yard line. He's got a little bit of room to scamper to the midfield stripe, and he's spun down right there. Ball's loose. They'll say his forward progress was stopped. So it'll be fourth in about four for the Bearcats after the big reception there by Carter Lehman. Well, so they almost made it to St. Mary's. Almost. I guess I was going the wrong way. Uh, fourth, oh. <laughs> and, fourth and Delphus, I guess. We were headed north. So yeah. Good they were read, backed good, up to St. Mary's. Good read by Josh there to get rid of the football and get it to the open receiver. 
His, uh, that was his uh, check down, most likely. He looked like he looked deep and nobody was open. Bearcats take a timeout. 21-7 to score. Crestfield with the advantage over Spencerville here in the fourth quarter on WOSN. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. The Bearcats would like to get back into Matt's Heating and Cooling Red Zone. Ball at the 49-yard line of Crestview. They'll send Nate Coulter in motion. They'll throw back to him. We talked about the potential for a double pass. I oh. believe they were trying it there, but the Crestview Knights swallowed it up. Kellen Putman, the big tackle for loss for the Knights. Yeah, he's made several big plays tonight, Garrett. And you can see here they were going to go for the double pass. As you mentioned, Coulter played quarterback last year and uh, certainly can throw the football. And there's number three again. So that's a turnover on downs for a Spencerville Bearcats. So Crestview gets the football with just over a minute 10 to go here in tonight's ball game. As Carson Hunter has Braxton Leaf to his right and Isaac Klein to his left in the gun on first and 10 with a two score lead. Leaf will get the handoff, bounces outside. Leaf makes one man miss, nearly broke another tackle, is finally Brought to the turf by Hayden Heyman, just shy of the 25-yard line, but it's a Union Bank first down for the Knights. Yeah, and the clock didn't move. Uh, I'm surprised we didn't, uh, there, there it begins to move again, but. See Braxton Leith on the replay, slips one tackle. Carter Lehman couldn't wrap him up before Hayden Heyman cuts him down, but it moved the chains, and now looks like the yeah, I'm sort of surprised that uh, Crestview didn't take a knee yeah. last play. I think that's what they're setting up now is Carson Hunter saying, hey, we had to get under 40 seconds to only have to snap it one more time as he'll stare at the play clock, snap the football, take the knee. And the Knights, after starting 3-0, lost four straight. And they're going to get on the win column, back in the win column, for the first time since a week three victory with a 21-7 win over the Spencerville Bearcats. So we'll step aside, we'll come back, head down to the field and chat with James Lottenheis with the Crestview head coach. Knights victorious, 21-7 over Spencerville here on WLSN. Back at Spencerville, wrapping up a 21-7 Crestview victory over the Spencerville Bearcats. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside James Lotzenizer, Crestview head coach. And James, you told us coming into the game, you guys wanted to make sure you had fun. Did you have fun tonight? We had fun. After the best month that we've had, it feels it feels really good to get a win tonight. And I think the guys are going to enjoy it. And then uh, we're going to get back to work for Ada next week. How much does just having Carson Hunter back change what you guys can do offensively? You saw it on display a couple of different times. We're just being able to keep plays alive really, really was a, a big difference tonight. Yeah, it, it, we're, we're blessed that we're at the point of the season now where we're starting to get some guys uh, back from some very early injuries. And we've been beat up. We're still kind of beat up in some areas. But it was nice having him back, his command, his presence in the huddle. Even when things weren't clicking right away, he was able to calm some guys down out there. And then we were able to... Um, to make some big plays when we needed to. Defensively, you pitch a shutout there in the second half. How did you feel about your, your defensive effort there in, in the second half? Coach Harmon uh, challenged the guys for a shutout in the second half, and they responded. Um, we didn't see anything that we weren't prepared for. We just needed to make sure that in those moments we communicated well and then uh, and then played fast and physical. And I'm, I'm proud of our defense. Big turnovers right there to set us up for a score. Changes the momentum. It changes the way that Spencerville can respond right there in the fourth quarter. Um, I'm really proud of them. Well, congratulations on the win. Best of luck next week against Ada. Thank you very much, Garrett. That's Crestview head coach James Lotzenheiser joining us here as the Knights win 21-7 to over the Spencerville Bearcats. Joined now once again by Scott Nurse. And, Scott, time to name our Stally Hustle Award winner. And, and I think one guy stood out above the rest. Yeah, we really like Putman. Um, 
Yeah, number th- yeah, Kellen Putnam Put- Putman caught that touchdown pass. He got the interception. He made the the final big defensive play there for the for the Knights. He was all over the field. Yeah, he was. He played both sides of the football. Had as you mentioned, touchdown catch, huge interception. Yeah, right absolutely. when the game was in the balance with a big return that set up the second the go ahead score. And I just thought uh, he made plays that were timely, and effective, and a key to the win. So. So Kellen Putman is our Stanley Hustle Award winner tonight. And for more Stanley Hustle Award winners, check out the WOSN YouTube page. Scott, final thoughts tonight here after this Crestview victory? Uh, no, just a great game. And, and, and I think Coach Lotzenheiser said it best. Um, you know, they got their guys back. They got their quarterback back. And you can see it definitely made a difference in their entire play. So Crestview victorious tonight, 21 to seven over the Spencerville Bearcats, moving to four and four on the season. Spencerville drops to one and seven. For our fantastic WOSN crew and Scott Nurse, I'm Garrett Seawright saying so long from Spencerville, and we'll catch you next time right here on WOSN.